Hey guys, Sam here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a double dip chip. All right, so we're taking this one video and we're dipping it twice. First and foremost, what's going to start off this video is how to put a track back onto our mini excavator. That is the main meat and taters portion of what happens in this thing, which I think through search results and how I'm going to structure this video, you're going to want to know first. So step one, we're jumping into the middle of things. Once that's done, we're going to back up, rewind, explain the project, start from the beginning, see the track break or whatever, fix it, and keep on rocking and rolling to the end. Otherwise, this video, chip dip number two, is about trenching everything needed for our solar arrays to run the wires from the panels to the outbuilding where our battery and inverter is going to be, and from that battery inverter outbuilding back around into our house, which is what's going to power our home. So without further ado, let's jump into it, start with a brake fix, and then have fun playing in the dirt. All right, I found the purpose of today's video, and that is to show you guys how to put the track back onto your mini excavator. We just had ours pop off for no clear reason. Obviously, there was a reason, but I'm not sure why. Don't think it was operator error, as so we're just moving back and forth straight while digging a trench. But we have a track that is completely off. So what I'm going to do is put the machine in a position that will allow us to go ahead and put the track back on. First thing is to start it up, move my boom arm over perpendicular to the track that is missing, or not where it should be, and then push my boom arm down to pick the machine up at an angle, tilt it, and then allow us to more easily work. You gotta have access to the bottom of the machine and get the weight off of those wheels. So that is step number one. All right, all right, with the excavator in the correct position, I need to go get some wrenches because what we need to do next is take off that circular plate right on the side of the tracks to get access to the track tension mechanism. So let's go get some tools. I'll see you guys back there in one second. All right, guys, this plate right here, get your good old buddy 10 millimeter, get your sockets if you still have yours, or get your wrench, whatever you can find, and take off the two bolts off of this circular cover. So inside this hole that we've now opened up by removing the cover, you're going to see a bolt and a lock nut. You need to loosen the lock nut and back the bolt out. This is not a traditional track tensioning system like you may be used to seeing, especially with larger machines. You don't use a grease gun. You don't have an idler wheel with a spring and all of that and hydraulically pump it up. This is done with the bolt and the lock nut. So we'll get our wrenches, try and get in there. It's probably gonna block the view but I need to loosen that jam nut, back it out quite a bit. Also back the bolt out quite a bit to pull the idler wheels closer together towards the middle. Then we should be able to put the track into place. All right, the bolt is quite loose. So now I'm coming up here to the idler wheel. This is the one at the front of the machine and I'm expecting this carriage to slide this way. My expectations have been dashed. <laughs> Maybe I need to keep backing that thing out. So the bolt back here is extremely loose. I think what we need here is a persuasion device of pendulum motion. I'm going to persuade it right here at the front of this idler wheel and see if we can't get her to scoot back. I don't want to create a flat spot on my idler, so I'm going to kind of rotate it, tap it, rotate it, and tap it. See if we can loosen this bolt by hand just a few more turns, and then persuade it again with our pendulum device. All right, looks like it's gone back as far as it will. At this point, we can just pick the track up Put it on the drive wheel and then roll it onto the front the benefit with this small excavator is i can pick the tracks up by hand that's at least a positive wait 
Bon. Ouais. Fais gaffe, qui t'es gagné Fais gaffe. Ouais, t'en fais. Fais gaffe. Bump it. Bump it. There we go, that's it. All right, the track is back on and tightened up. We're gonna turn off the machine so you can hear us. Now I'm gonna tighten this jam nut down here and get it as tight as I can with the adjustable wrench. Last thing to do is put your cover back on with your 10 millimeter bolts and get back to work. And there we have it. The track is back on the mini excavator and all things considered, it wasn't too bad. So the thing that made it difficult for us is I loosened that bolt by hand until I felt like it stopped. And so then I assumed, good enough, let's put the track on. In reality, it needed to go back another couple of inches. So don't be scared. Back that thing back, hit it the idler wheel with a hammer and really get it out of the way. It'll save you a lot of time and frustration. But now that it's back in action, that concludes this portion of how to do a track but if you want to stick around and see this whole project as a whole and exactly what we're using this for we'll get you caught up from past until now and after that i'll go you from here to the end so kind of a weird way to tell the story but i figured i put the nice meat and potato portion up front for you guys and if you want to stick around for the party you can choose to do so then To kickstart this, we have our mini excavator right over here at the back side of our rear solar array. So this is the array that's on the north side, because south is that one, and the sun faces that way. So what we're going to do is go ahead and use some spray paint on the ground to give us some lines to follow to trace where we want to run our trench, which will go from the solar array back towards the woods, which is where I'm walking, then it's going to go that way to that green storage building because that is where our inverter and battery system has been installed. Since we live in a single wide mobile home, we don't have much room at all for things inside. So we are doing a little bit different of an installation, basically creating ourselves our own power utility building. That's where the inverter and battery will be. Solar wires run in and AC electrical wires run out of there and go to the house. So first things first, Spray paint ourselves a line to follow.
It is the next day and I'm ready to get kicking on some chicken to finish out trenching. So I have two more trenches to do. One is going to connect our north solar array to our south. So a little trench down there connecting the two. That will allow us to wire up our south array, run it over to the north array, which is where we'll have our main solar disconnect, surge protection devices, combiner box, all of that stuff will be here right about there so we need to connect them there and then trench number two is going to connect in with the main one we dug yesterday but kind of spur off and veer off to go around and into the crawl space of the home okay or at least right up to it this is going to be the pathway that our 240 volt ac electrical wires will run from our inverter in the building around into the house through the crawl space and up to the transfer switch box that we'll be installing in our home next or in the future. So without further ado, let's start trenching. I think I'm gonna start with the solar array connector trench first. Sun's out. So we're gonna be rocking my American sombrero. So this part of the trenching was the most uh, sketchy and delicate. I had to dig around the solar arrays and really, really be careful that I did not hit them. And of course, going through this drainage ditch here, the little gully we have on our property, make sure I didn't flip myself over. And thankfully, I was successful. It did take a lot of careful movements. I'm happy to say there were no uh, scary or iffy or questionable sections but that was because I was being very, very careful and mindful of how I positioned the machine, uh, turning it around one time as I went across to put the blade in front as it always should be while you're digging and just to be, again, careful. That being said, our trench is done as far as connecting the south array, which is what we are under right now, to the north array. And it is about two feet deep, if not a little bit more in some areas and going to be wonderfully, probably overkill for the four solar wires that will go in their conduit straight down 
over into that other array. But hey, we wanna make sure this is done properly, safe, correctly, and just, you know, not halfway do a job to regret it in the future. So with this trench done, we are left with just one more. <laughs> I feel like I've said that so much and we've been trenching for days. I guess we have at this point, day number two. But this one should be easier as long as I don't hit any kind of obstacles under the ground, which I hope I didn't jinx myself. And that, my friends, is our back and side yard destroyed. <laughs> we have got trenches everywhere, but they are done. They were all necessary, and this mini excavator really made the job possible. Give a hand to the mini X. I am very glad that we did not hit any major roots or rocks or any huge obstructions. That is great. It is wonderful to have the trench completely dug at least two feet deep in absolutely every location, with the exception of a couple places here and there that need to be hand dug. That's fine. Manuel labor can show up. It's up for the task. And then over here, uh, this last little connector trench, if you have eagle eyes and I left it in there, which I probably will, I discovered and was reminded that you have a foundation drain pipe that runs from our house out into our field at a low spot and decided to sever that. So there's a little repair work in the future. And then I also um, discovered that the septic company that installed our septic tank, which has an electric pump and all that in it, they did not bury that wire appropriately and they did not put it in conduit. But thankfully the wire was not cut, it was not damaged, and it was just a discovery of intellect rather than regret. Either way guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video, getting to see us trench a whole lot. Uh, put the tracks back on the Mini X, right? That was probably the number one thing that I'll focus on as far as uh, what to really hook people searching for stuff. I'll include that in the front. You've probably already seen it. So got to see that and otherwise destroy our yard. So again, this is one part of a video series of us putting our home off grid as much as possible, installing solar panels, arrays, and all that. If you're curious in other videos, links down below. Otherwise, take care. We'll see you guys next time on the homestead.